Welcome back, students. We are still on chemical bonding. Now, before I go into detail to pick the actual types of bonds that we studied in our last video, I want to bring out these terms that will run through the study of chemical bonding for you to understand them. So that when we mention them, you know what we mean by uh, those terms. Remember, in our last video, we talked about the two main types of bonds. The interatomic, meaning that we are talking about bonds between atoms. And then the intermolecular, which also means that we are talking about bonds or force of attraction between molecules. And I'm saying that every substance is made up of millions and billions of other atoms or molecules put together. Remember, in some of our previous videos, we have talked about we have talked about the fact that every substance or every matter is made up of other atoms, molecules, or ions. The basic building units or the basic units of all substances, of all matter, we know from Len Wright series that it is either an atom, a molecule, or what? An ion. Now today I will illustrate some of these uh, basic units and how they combine to form the substances before we apply them to the main study of chemical bonding. We talked about ions. I want to start with ions because that is for atoms you know them. We have atoms, then we have the molecules, we have ions. If I pick any atom from the basic study that we did, we said that every atom is neutral. From atomic structure, we studied that every atom in the nucleus has protons and neutrons. Around this nucleus is a what? Electrons. And we said every atom is a neutral atom because the number of protons which is positively charged always is balanced by number of electrons in them. The neutrons are neutral. Let's consider this as an atom. Within this atom, we have our three yellow balls, which we are going to assume are our protons. And then we have the three white balls, which we assume are our electrons. Once we have three each of protons and three uh, uh, electrons, we say this atom is a neutral atom because the positive protons balance out the negative electrons. Now, protons are not easily lost from the nucleus. The species can, that can easily be taken away or added on onto an atom is within the atomous shells, and that is the electrons. So if I have my one of these electrons one of these electrons taken out from this atom and I put it somewhere here. Now, if I'm balancing it, what do I have? I have my three protons and two electrons. If we add the two, what will you get? You get you get three protons and you have two electrons so this is plus three isn't it and this will be minus two if i add a two this plus is what will i get i'm going to get plus one so i have one excess of proton so we see that that atom will become positively charged and a positively charged atom is then called an ion but what type of ion? We have two types of ions. Once it is positively charged, we call it a cation. Then please be careful. It is not pronounced cation. It is called a cation. Don't laugh. Because for a very long time, when doing our time, there were no teachers. All teachers had run away to neighboring uh, South Africa and Zambia. We were trying to read on our own for a very long time. Whenever I saw this, I pronounced it as cation until someone told me that no, it is not called cation. It is called a cation. So it is not a laughing matter. 
any possible charge ion because that particular atom has lost some electrons, one or more electrons, is called a cation. Again, an atom can gain electrons. If I still have my balanced atom like this, this atom is there. This atom can receive an electron from can receive an electron from a neighboring atom. So if I add this to it, now what do I have? I'll have four electrons compared to three protons. Remember, protons will hardly change in their number unless you have nuclear reactions. In chemical reactions, protons don't change. It is usually the electrons that will either be lost or you gain an electron onto yourself. So now we have four electrons in this atom and we have three protons. If we do the addition, we are going to have still so our proton being three. Our protons will still be three, but we have four electrons. So here we will have plus three, and this will be minus four. If you add the two, you are going to get minus one. If it receives more electrons, then it's going to be what? Minus two. So whenever you have an atom becoming negatively charged, because it has gained electrons, we call it an anion. We call it an anion. So an ion is either a cation or an anion. Are we clear with that? An ion is either a cation, meaning that it has lost electrons to become positively charged, or it is an anion, meaning that it has gained electrons to become negatively charged. So that is the meaning of ions. Atoms, we have discussed them already. The individual atoms that God created on this earth are the atoms. And we say an atom is the smallest particle of an element that can exist and keep the properties of that particular element. Okay? Ions are made from atoms by gain or loss of electron. So we define an ion as an electrically charged particle. Of course, all this is that I'm talking about, the electrical charge. An ion is defined as an electrical charged particle formed from an atom or sometimes a molecular compound by gain or loss of one or more electron. Of course, I've illustrated uh, the concept of ions by using only atoms. But it could also, uh, a molecule or a compound could also gain an electron or lose an electron. Examples of compounds that can, that form ions are something like this, SO4, 2 minus. This means that a compound, sulfur and oxygen for bonding together would have lost, would have gained two electrons. And so it is an ion and that we call the sulfate anion. You can also have something like this. This whole compound, ammonium ion, it is a cation. And when these things happen, we call them radicals. Okay? Sometimes, if the nature is very complex, we call them complex ions. So molecules can also lose or gain electrons. And once you lose electrons, you become positively charged. You become a cation. If you gain electrons, you become negatively charged. You become an anion. So anions and uh, cations are not limited only to atoms that have gained or lost electrons. It can also apply to molecules gaining or losing electrons. And when it happens, we call them radicals. Or if the nature is so complex, we call them complex. We call them complex ions. A molecule is a combination of atoms. You know that already. Water, nitrogen, hydrogen. When you combine all these atoms, when you combine all these atoms, you get what we call a molecule. Okay. Now, if the molecule is there and it has not lost electron or gained electron, it is simply a neutral molecule. But of course, there are several types of uh, molecules. Let's explain some of them. So that when we use these terms in explanation of chemical bonding, it will be conversant to you. If we have a molecule made up of the same atom, 
the same type of atom. An example of this, nitrogen and hydrogen. It is nitrogen, two atoms of nitrogen coming together to form a bond. Two atoms of hydrogen coming together to form a bond. You can have O3, ozone, that is called ozone. Three oxygen atoms coming together to form a bond. You can have oxygen, two of them coming together to form a bond. All these types of atoms, this, that, that, and that. You see that they are more than one atom. So once they are two or more forming a bond to form a molecule, we call them homonuclear. Homonuclear. Homo means same types of the nuclei of an atom coming together. Homonuclear atoms. Homo, sorry, homonuclear molecules. The word homo simply meaning the same types of atoms. So the same types of atoms, it could be two, same type of atoms, could be three, could be four, same types of atoms coming together. Remember, one of our videos, we solved a problem where we talked about phosphorus. That is the actual nature of phosphorus in life. That is how it exists. It P4, four atoms of phosphorus coming together to form a bond to, call, to be called a phosphorus. So that is also a homonuclear molecule because this is not an atom. It is a molecule homonuclear uh, molecule, phosphorus. Now, if we have different types of atoms coming together to form a molecule, then the word used there is hetero, heteronuclear. Please, one word, heteronuclear molecules. Now, heteronuclear molecules, an example is water, okay, ammonia, phosphine, Methane, they are different. Sodium chloride. Okay, we have, we can write thousands of them. And they are called heteronuclear molecules because the atoms that bonded together to form that one molecule are different types of atoms. They are different types of atoms. So please note, in this simple video, we are explaining Sometimes we have explained what is an atom, we have explained what is uh, an ion, ions and the ion, we have the cations and the anions. We have explained what is a molecule, and then within the molecule, I'm explaining what is a homonuclear molecule and then what is a heteronuclear molecule. I'm going to introduce another uh, term. You may also you may also see something like diatomic triatomic tetraatomic or whatever here the Greek word the Greek prefaces die are just numbers indicating numbers die means two tri means three tetra means four so if they say diatomic it means that you have a molecule which consists of two atoms. Here, it does not specify whether it is the same atom or it is what? Different atom. Whether they are the same or different. It is, the da is referring to the number of atoms in the molecule. So diatomic, I can write examples as nitrogen molecule. I can write examples as hydrogen molecule. I can write examples as oxygen molecule. Here, they are what? Homonuclear diatomic molecules. Homonuclear, being, meaning that they are the same. But what is the number of atoms in there? There are two. So homonuclear diatomic molecules. I've combined this and then a new adjective that I'm introducing, the di. But again here, within uh, this one, if I write sodium chloride, do you see that there are also two atoms? So I'll say heteronuclear diatomic molecule. Hetero means that the two atoms that are combined to form that one molecule are different. The diatomic also, the di there also tells me that there are two atoms in the molecule. The hetero explaining that there are two different atoms. So we have here, these ones are homonuclear diatomic molecules. But this is heteronuclear diatomic molecule. If I come to triatomic and I write ozone, 
Ozone is made up of three different atoms of oxygen. Sorry, three atoms of oxygen. Now, because they are the same, it will become homonuclear. But how many atoms are there? There are three. So, triatomic. So, this ozone will be described as a homonuclear triatomic molecule. I guess it is simple. So, di, tri, tetra, etc., penta are simply referring to the number of atoms that make up the uh, molecule. It is similar to something we discussed in one of our former videos, which we call atomicity. Remember this word, atomicity. Simply the number of atoms that make up a molecule. The total number of atoms that make up a molecule. Okay, atomicity is the total number of atoms that make up one mole of any molecule. So, then it will describe it, tri, tetra, and so on. The homo and the hetero describes the types of atoms. These ones describe the number of the atoms. So, these are the basic terms that we are going to encounter in chemical bonding. In chemical bonding. As and when we come across new terms, it will explain to you. So, in our next video, I'll call this just an intro, intro to the main video that we are going to start, uh, we are going to discuss in our next video. In our next video, we are going to pick the interatomic, that is the primary bonding, to explain each of them. When we finish, we go to the interatomic bonding, the fourth type that we mentioned, and explain each of them, and deal with all the chemistry that exists in those types of compounds that form the bonds. And that will let you understand why substances around us behave the way they behave. Why salt should exist as solid, but then when I put it in water, it doesn't stay in the water as solid, but it should dissolve. As a chemist, you must be able to explain. Scientists, you are something you know, who want to understand whatever God did, so we can apply it to our benefit. Why will sand, when put in water, not dissolve? But when I put sodium chloride, that is a salt, in water to dissolve. Why will I put sugar in water and it will dissolve? But if I put another substance similar to sugar in water, why it doesn't dissolve? Do you understand that? Why will salt not dissolve in petrol? Of course, petrol is also a liquid. Why will it dissolve in water? But when I put it in petrol, it will stay there as salt, it will not dissolve. We will explain all this. Trying to understand God, trying to understand nature. So we don't make mistakes. If science had not developed, I bet you, life would have ended long ago. Because we we'll do certain things, and then before you realize, you are dead and gone. Today is 21st of uh, October. Just quite recently, at Atomic Junction, we saw a very huge gas explosion at Atomic Junction. As I speak to you now, we now, that portion of the road Atomic Junction has been blocked because of the explosion. I tell you, the very people who were working with the gas there, I don't mean to insult, but basically do not understand the chemistry of gases. That's the main reason. And after this accident and several other that have occurred before, the government is now becoming conscious and they are now forming a team or a platform on which scientists will come and be educating the public on the gases that they use. Of course, if you come to my house because I'm a scientist, my gas cylinder is outside somewhere and I've connected, through, I've connected it through the walls with pipe into the kitchen. And it supplies the gas only to the gas stove. If there's any leakage on the on the gas cylinder and it comes out, nobody will be around the gas cylinder there whilst you are cooking. You'll be using only the little one that comes out of the tube on the gas stove. That is because I understand chemical bonding and understand how gases behave. I understand the chemistry of gases. So we need to be coached and trained on all these 
It is a lesson to the entire nation. And I think the people that have the powers are beginning to do the right things. Some people know it. They have studied it. And that is why they are put there to manage the whole system. And yet, we are always reneging on our responsibilities. It's about time we change our ways and understand the basic things in nature. Thank you. Don't stay away. Come with me in the next video.